Hey, what's up guys? It's Mario back again with another trade video. Uh, today what I'm actually gonna go over is not only my day trade that I had on uh, Take-Two Interactive, um, a company that is uh, owner of Rocket Games, the creators of like Grand Theft Auto, things like that. But I wanna specifically cover more of what three red flags that each day trader should look at every single day before they make a day trade on a certain stock. Now, these are things that I fail to recognize today that I usually do, but for whatever reason, I did not recognize them today. And I do want to talk about them because there was a great, a really good uh, first red day setup on the daily chart uh, based on the daily chart on Take Two Interactive and also based on uh, yesterday's intraday chart. But today, when it came down to it, the volume wasn't there. Now there was other things that I want to talk about that there were red flags that I should have uh, have avoided that trade. Uh, now I want to kind of cover those because there are differences when it comes down to day trading and swing trading. Um, and one of the major big differences is liquidity, especially when it comes out to day trading. You need liquidity so you can get in and out on a trade, but also so like a trade could actually uh, go either up or down. And there's other things that I want to cover. They're very very important. So. Uh, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to go over those things. All right, let's get started. Okay. So uh, first of all, I kind of want to go over uh, Take-Two Interactive um, and the daily chart and, and, and kind of go over why I, I did trade it or why it was on my watch list to begin with and it had to do with um, how it looked in the daily chart. Now, let me create a new blank. Uh, screen because I think it's just it'll be a lot easier here here you go so uh, you know when it comes out to first red day setups I do um, use the uh, Bollinger Band to kind of see how extended it is on the daily chart if you guys could see take two interactive broke over all the two week highs and it kind of just trended multiple days in a row and it was already trading above uh, the uh, the Bollinger Band and it yesterday had a, a, a blow off candle and that was pretty much the real the reason, the actual reason why it was interesting to, to day trade uh, uh, for a first red day today because of the ball of candle. Uh, so look, going into the uh, intraday chart, this was yesterday's uh, move. So huge spike at the open, uh, so it's kind of like a blow off, and then literally decided to go below the volume weighted average price and kind of just stay there. Uh, and again, this is after multiple days in a row of movement. Uh, and we had a huge volume yesterday. Uh, I believe there was like over three times the uh, the average volume trade. And actually, I have it right here written. Uh, yeah, around three times the average volume trade was yesterday. So it was a good indication there was there's a volume in there yesterday. But um, and this is one thing that I want to cover. So there's three things that I failed to recognize, even though I, I saw some of them. I didn't, you know, fully recognize it when when it came down to it. Uh, that actually hurt me uh, today. Uh, so the first thing that I want to talk about um, is the volume, the volume, uh, volume pre market, because when it comes down to day trading, one of the things that you want, especially if you're in day trade, intraday trading, you need volume. And there's no volume. Uh, that's a red flag that hey, you may you may be better off not day trading the stock because if there's no volume volume intraday, there's probably not going to be enough volume <laughs> throughout the mid morning, throughout the first 30 to half uh, an hour of day trading for you to even be worth your trade. Because uh, when it comes down to day trading, especially when you're trading such a such a short period of time, you need to get in and out. You know, especially when you're trading with a large account or you're leveraging your money. Uh, you may be leveraging a couple thousand dollars, you know, we'd be talking about 10, 20, 30, $40,000. And if there's not enough volume, you're not going to be able to get out in and out at the right levels and you could lose money and you could take a hit. So that's the first thing. Uh, first thing that I noticed, uh, very, very low, uh, pre-market volume. I believe if you, if you notice, here's the volume area when I, when I hover over a candlestick, uh, you'll see the volume. So this again, one minute volume candlestick, and there was only 353 shares traded pre-market, which, you know, that is not good at all. And in this candle right here, which is kind of like a doji, there was only like a hundred shares. So again, not looking good. And, and I noticed that, and I was already kind of like, uh, I was a little bit skeptical, skeptical on, on Take-Two Interactive, 
Uh, but because it was the only stock that I was looking at for today, I decided to kind of give it some time to see how it was going to react at the open. Now, the second thing that a lot of people don't actually look at, uh, something that I actually started looking at uh, as a day trader, a uh, full-time day trader more often now, uh, because it's very, very important, is the options, uh, the options volatility. So if you look at take two interactive uh, options volatility for the weekly, for the, uh, the expiration of uh, this Friday, December 18, which is uh, this Friday, um, so it expires in three days, the options imply volatility is only 34.47%, and which is very, very low. That means this is not a lot of volatility. There's not gonna be a lot of range you could trade with. So honestly, it was not a good stock to even consider. And, and the, the interesting thing is I didn't notice it the day before. Uh, and the only reason why I decided to keep it in my, in my, in my, in my, my trading plan was because it was literally the only thing available uh, for me based on my process and the, and the type of setups that I trade. And it was a first red day type of setup. So I felt, eh, we'll see what happens. But that was a red flag. Again, very low uh, implied volatility for the weekly option expiring on Friday, uh, below 50%. Honestly, I, especially for a um, first red day setup, I prefer a very high implied volatility for the weekly option. Uh, and I, I'm looking at, I, I prefer something like at 100% or not higher, you know, so 90%, 100%. So it kind of just let it, lets you know that there's a huge probability of there's going to be a huge move. So in this case, the move was going to be up or down $5.50. Uh, but again, because the implied volatility was below 50%, 34.47, it was, it was the probabilities are very low. So that move is not going to happen. There's going to be very low volatility. So it's pretty much telling you that nothing much is going to happen intraday in a stock or even in the next couple, three days, actually, because keep in mind this, uh, this, uh, this uh, option expires in three days and Friday. So literally it's telling you that the next three days, there's really not going to be much movement in the stock, you know? <laughs> so that's pretty much what it's telling you. So already the options, the implied volatility, the options are already telling you, Hey, you may not even want to tra day trade this. Maybe a swing trade, but not even a day trade. So something I want to highly, highly emphasize for a lot of new day traders because it's, it's so, so important to really start understanding how options uh, uh, work and, and how and why they're important, especially for day traders. So that was another thing. Now, the last thing, which is also very, very important, is that, um, you know, for a day trade, for, for you to find enough liquidity to get in and out in a day trade, you typically want to have at least half a million trades uh, being traded during the first uh, half hour of the trading day. At least half a million uh, uh, shares volume traded uh, before you decide to actually make a day trade. Uh, because when there's half a million or more shares they traded, that means there's enough liquidity for you to get in and get out. And usually with that, that amount of volume, usually there's a movement either up or down uh, where you could kind of make a profit on the range. So, uh, and nothing happened. There was no volume and I could see why there's no volume. Um, now that I really think about it, you know, as, as a day trader, uh, if I was a day trader, professional day trader, um, you know, if I were to look at the implied volatility, just based on the implied volatility, I would have been like, you know what, this is not a, a day trade. This is more of a swing trade because there's literally no volatility in the stock. Why will I risk any money to get in or out when there's not enough volatility for me uh, to trade? There's not enough range. Uh, so I can see why volume was so low. You know, it kind of makes sense. Uh, but again, I failed to recognize that. I failed to, you know, you know, recognize that and say like, you know what, is that even worth it? It's not even day trade. But because again, and this is where things get a little tricky as a day trader sometimes you have no day trades and you are better off walking away, you know, not day trading, you know, just walking away and calling it a day is hey, the setup that I like on the daily looks like a great setup, but it does not look like a day trade. There's not enough volume. There's not enough volatility. Volatility is not worth my time. Now as a swing trade, um, it could have worked. It could have worked now, especially with the volatility, the implied volatility being so low, this could have been a, a, a great uh, swing trade but something that probably will materialize into like a week or two. Just because of the implied volatility being so low, um, you know, this 
most likely not going to materialize. So if you, uh, for example, if, if I were to swing trade this uh, and maybe short here at 197 with a stop at uh, 200, you know, and again, the pie volatility says plus or minus 550 based on the uh, yesterday's close. It's pretty much saying that, uh, you know, the, the, the one standard deviation move uh, either could go up above 201 or below up to 188. So my target is pretty much shortening here and stop up, you know, high day. And my target is around 188.50s. Uh, so it's almost like a one on one uh, type of day trade. So again, that may take a couple of days, maybe a week or two to materialize. But in terms of day trading, absolutely not enough liquidity, not enough volume. So those were the things that failed because I mean, if you look at the uh, at the open, you know, the first couple minutes. So these are each candle is represents one minute. So if you look at them, you know, eighteen thousand traded, three thousand, et cetera, et cetera. So actually, let me uh, put a a, a thirty minute candle. So this is the first thirty minutes of how it reacted, and there was only a. If you look at the volume right here, there's only one hundred eighty five thousand shares traded within the first half hour. So that was uh, pretty much the, uh, uh, the other red flag. So my thought process with this, and, and again, I did it, I have been very successful day trading uh, first red days on, on a break uh, to new lows. Um, but because the volume wasn't there, there was just really, and no, not only not, not just the volume, but the volatility wasn't there. There's just no room for, for a move. So, I mean, overall, I mean, my process is if, you know, if, if it starts, you know, if if uh, if a if a first red day type of setup opens green, just like this one, there's a stuff in the morning, and it goes red, um, you want to short with a stop at high of day. So, and that's pretty much exactly what I did. You know, um, it went red. I waited for for it to kind of hover. I waited for some consolidation. I said, okay, it went red already. If it breaks below 184.80s right here, I'm gonna short. And that's exactly what it did. But when I shorted, it literally, uh, you know, absorbed my short and squeezed out. And a, uh, a, 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 a uh, we call it, uh, reclaimed the volume weighted average price, which is this purple line, this purple trend line. And a, I got stopped out once it broke above 196. And that was it. That was pretty much it. That was a trade. Uh, now, the good thing about this trade was that, um, I did not lose more than my, my risk. Uh, so it was part of uh, my risk management plan it was, was fine. It's just that it was a no go. It shouldn't have been a day trade pretty much. What I'm trying to say is that I shouldn't even trade this. You know, as soon as I saw this uh, implied volatility the day before of below 50%, I should have just said, you know what? Even though on the daily, it looks good. And yesterday we had a blow up time which is a really, really good signs I mean, for a first red day, the volatility is not there to make it worth my time. The volatility is not there. And the other couple of things, there's no volume too, pre-market or even at the open, there was no volume. So those should have been just red flags to avoid. So, um, and that's pretty much it guys. I, again, and the reason why I'm covering this guys it's because, um, you know, for a lot of beginner day traders, sometimes we fail to recognize what stocks we should be day trading and what stocks we should be swing trading. Just because there's a really nice setup on the daily chart with a high probability, like in this case, first red day, doesn't mean it's a, as a, as a day trade. Because, again, when it comes to a day trade, uh, for one, you need the volume. You need the liquidity to get, to get in and out uh, at a certain price. Two, you need volatility, you need a range. You need a range, you know, because you, as a day trader, you want to make money on a range intraday. So there's, as the implied volatility is very low, it's below 50%, it's pretty much telling you, hey, there's really not going to be a big range, uh, a lot of volatility for you to make money on a day trade. So, and third, of course, looking at the pre-market. The pre-market, you know, it's a telltale sign to see who's interested in trading the stock. So the reason why uh, pre-market volume is important is because pre-market volume is like a telltale sign. It tells you, you know what, when there's a lot of volume pre-market, that means there's a lot of interest in a stock. 
It means there's a lot of interest. People are interested. <clears throat> people either want to short or go long the stock. There's, there's interest in the stock. Um, so there's opportunity to make money on a day trade. Uh, so that's the reason why pre-market volume, implied volatility, and uh, uh, volume once the market opens on the first half an hour of the J trade are so important. Well, guys, I hope you guys learned something from this video. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me down below, and then you guys will hear from me soon. Have a good one, guys. Take care.